Watch the tutorial. I'm going to show you how to use the master unit to control Pro Tools when you have it set up as a secondary workstation. So to begin with, we want to make sure that we are actually operating the secondary workstation. In this case, I have Pro Tools set up as the DAW B. So right now, the, the whole work surface is connected to Pro Tools. Um, so let's just start at the top here. Obviously, the DAW keys switch between the different workstations. The touch screen, however, and all the controls up here are still operating Nuendo. They don't operate Pro Tools in this mode. That way you can have access to control room functions and that sort of thing in Nuendo in order to hear the Pro Tools system uh, that you have set up as a secondary workstation. Moving on down the line, the automation functions are not available for Pro Tools. Neither are the user definable keys. The control room section, the monitor source switching and mix source switching, that all remains uh, to control Nuendo. It's not controlling Pro Tools. Same with the queue section. You can still have access to the queues in Nuendo, um, but it's just not controlling anything in Pro Tools. The numeric keypad. Now, the, the, the buttons at the top of the numeric keypad don't operate anything, but the numeric keypad itself does operate the Pro Tools computer. And this is just like the numeric keypad on the right side of a Mac keyboard. So the escape key, um, backspace, uh, clear works just like the clear button. Uh, set does not do anything. However, that you would not find on the Mac keyboard. Uh, the previous, next, and cycle buttons, they operate the minus, plus, and the period button on the Mac keyboard. So in Pro Tools, this is good for nudging uh, audio files back and forth. The enter key function is just like the enter key on a Mac keyboard. For example, if I press enter, it calls up the memory, the new memory location dialog box where you can enter the name for a new memory location. Also here, uh, the escape key works this in the same fashion. By pressing this, we will effectively press the cancel button on the dialog box. The enter button on the right side of the master unit also functions the same as this enter key. So if I press it, it also brings up the new memory location dialog box. The modifier keys down here at the bottom of the master unit function the same as the modifier keys in a, a Mac keyboard. So the shift key is the shift key on the keyboard. The alt key is the option key on a Mac keyboard. And the control key is also the control key on a Mac keyboard. So these modifier buttons can help some of the other functionality of the master unit uh, to do different things. Now in the transport section, there's a lot of functionality in Pro Tools here on the Nuage Master Unit. To begin with, the display access button here, the blue button, will call up the transport window itself in Pro Tools. So once we have that window called up, if you take a look, when I turn on the pre-roll and the post-roll, those become active in Pro Tools as well. The punch in and punch out buttons work together on the master unit to turn on the quick punch feature in Pro Tools. And you'll see that reflected by the P and the record button there. That's a quick way to turn that on and off. The cycle key turns on cycle mode in Pro Tools. And the sync online button turns the sync function on in Pro Tools. It'll flash when you first turn it on, but once you receive proper sync, the transport will go into play, and this light will be solid. The left and right keys are used to set the in and the out point in Pro Tools while you're playing back. So let's say we're playing here, and I want to set my end point. I can just hit the left key, and as we play further along, let me zoom in a little bit. Let's say I want to set my out point here. Now I can do so. The previous event, next event, mem and zap buttons are not functional in Pro Tools. The standard transport controls, rewind, fast forward, play, stop, and record, all function the same as they do in the Pro Tools transport window. 
The edit section of the master control has several functions available. One, the display access button, the blue button, will bring the edit window to the forefront. When it's unlit, that means the mix window is the front window. This way you can go back and forth between the edit and mix windows in Pro Tools, just like you could with the work, workspace controls over in the fader unit. The object select key on the master unit is used to change between the four different editing modes in Pro Tools, slip, spot, grid, and shuffle. The move button is actually used to call up the separate region function in Pro Tools. So let's take a look. I have a little area selected right here. Now if I press the move button, that has separated that region into its own unique region. Now I can use, say, the plus and minus keys over here on the numeric keypad to nudge that region backwards and forwards on the timeline. Like that. The cut, copy, and paste buttons on the master unit operate the cut, copy, and paste functions within Pro Tools. So let's take this same region that I've just separated. Now I can cut it, and let's say I'm going to move ahead a little bit, and I would be able to paste it back in. Or I could copy it, and maybe move back here, and now I can paste it back in there as a copy. Snap. Auto scroll and auto select don't have any function in Pro Tools. The COM section on the master unit is actually still controlling Nuendo, so any features you have programmed into those two user definable keys will actually affect Nuendo and not Pro Tools. The talkback button also turns the talkback on in control room in Nuendo. The save button on the master unit will save the Pro Tools session. If the button is lit, that means there are unsaved changes in the session. When you first press the Save button, it begins to flash, and this indicates that you're ready to actually save the session. This is just a precaution so you don't accidentally save a session by pressing the button once. If you don't wish to save, you can press Escape and cancel the save operation. Once you've saved the Pro Tools session, the light goes dim until you make changes. Just underneath that, the Undo button also functions the same in Pro Tools. It's to undo any editing that you have, any step that you've performed, you can undo it. If you undo it, you can see now that the Undo light is, starts to flash. That indicates we're a step back from the last stage of editing. And the Save button lights up, indicating that there are unsaved changes to the current project. So I hit Save once, it flashes, then I hit Save again to save the session. The arrow keys here on the bottom of the master unit perform many functions in Pro Tools depending on the mode of the cursor. So to begin with, um, in every mode, whenever you use the Alt key plus one of the arrows, you will scroll either horizontally or vertically through the Edit or Mix window in Pro Tools. So as you can see here, I'm using the right arrow to scroll horizontally to the right, left arrow to the left. If I have a lot of tracks in the session, then I can scroll vertically up and down through the Pro Tools session, like that. The function of the arrow keys is determined by the cursor mode. And the zoom and quick zoom buttons here at the bottom of the master unit change that mode. We go from navigation mode when neither button is lit up. If we press it once, we go into zoom mode where both buttons are lit. And then we press it again and both buttons start flashing. That is select mode. So depending on which mode you're in, the arrow keys will have different functions. Both the zoom and quick zoom buttons are the same in this mode. In other words, it doesn't matter which button you hit, they perform the same function. When we're in zoom mode, which is both of the buttons lit up, now we can perform horizontal zooming in and out using the arrow keys. The vertical arrow keys zoom the waveform larger or smaller. 
Now again, if you use the Alt key while in this mode, you will scroll horizontally or vertically, depending. In the navigation mode, where both of the buttons are not lit at all, there are several ways to move around the session. So let me zoom out here just a little bit. So if I'm on a track like this, my cursor is ahead of the first region, and I'm in navigation mode, I can press the right arrow, and that will take me to that first region boundary. If I keep on pressing the right arrow, I will step through the various edges of each region, moving the cursor along like that. Now it's over here. Go back to here, back and forth. The up and down arrows will move the cursor to adjacent tracks vertically. Now, when you use the arrow keys in navigation mode in conjunction with the shift modifier, you can add to your selection. So now if I use the up down arrows with the shift modifier, I'm going to stretch the cursor across multiple tracks like this. Now if I use the shift modifier with the right arrow, I'm going to select on all those tracks everything until the next event boundary. Now as I tab through here using the right arrow, it's going to look for the next region boundary on any one of those tracks. Now I have a much larger selection, just simply using the modifier key and the arrow keys. The control key modifier allows you to select the next region on that track. So let's say once again I'm on this track here, and I press the control key and the right arrow, it will select the entire next region, like that. If I keep the control key pressed and use the right arrow, it'll select the next available region and so on. By using the shift and control together, as you can see, I can select several regions in a row. Once again, if I click here, control and shift, next region, next region, next region. Now I can use the shift modifier and extend that selection down to other tracks or up to other tracks. The fade in, volume, fade out, trim tail, split, and trim head functions aren't available in Pro Tools. And also you can tell if the function is going to be available to you if the key itself, the button itself, is backlit. If it's not backlit, it's not available. To the left of the scroll wheel are the scrub and shuttle buttons. Now these do work in Pro Tools. When I go into scrub mode like this, now the scroll wheel on the master unit can be used to scrub the audio in Pro Tools. Also, the shuttle function works. So once I enter shuttle mode, now the scroll wheel will operate like a shuttle wheel allowing Pro Tools to go in various speeds, both forward and backward. When using the Shift modifier with either the Scrub or the Shuttle, you can make selections in the same fashion. I'm going to hold the Shift key here while I'm in Shuttle mode, and now notice how I'm making a selection using the Shuttle speed. If I wanted to use Scrub to make a very fine selection, I can go into Scrub mode, press the Shift key, and now I'm making a much more precise selection using Scrub. Additionally, if I use the Alt key along with the Shift key, the Scrub becomes more refined, much more precise. The increment and decrement keys, the plus and minus keys at the bottom of the fader unit, are not active in Pro Tools. You can use the Alt key modifier with the plus and minus keys, the nudge keys on the keypad here, to change the selection in Pro Tools. So here, if I just use plus and minus, 
I'm nudging the selection around. But if I use the Alt key, it will either increase or decrease the length of that selection. So by itself, just moves around. With the Alt key, we increase or decrease the selection. So those are the functions available to you on the master unit when you are controlling Pro Tools as a secondary workstation in Nuage.